Hi, I'm Meg from Cook with Meg and we are in the kitchen. Together today we are going to create one of the most epic holiday eggnog pies. Here is my recipe. So if you want to bake along with me, grab your recipe, grab your tools, which is all listed, grab your ingredients and let's go. This is going to be in 99.9% .9 real time. I may do a quick little cut if something has to cool for a long time, but I am literally making this with you step by step. Are you ready? There's my holiday tree in the kitchen. Our dog Oliver is laying on his mat. Hopefully that's where he'll stay. <laughs> so let's get cooking. I'm super excited. This is a recipe that I put together for the Egg Farmers of Alberta and I love it. It's pure holidays. It's an eggnog pie from scratch. So we're actually not using eggnog, which some recipes for eggnog pie call for mainly eggnog. This one is all scratch made. So we're going to get our bake on. Here we go. The first thing you will see me looking at my recipe. The first thing that we need to do is preheat our ovens to 350 and we need to get our graham cracker, buttery, nutmeggy, cinnamony crust ready to go. So we need two cups of graham cracker crumbs. I often get asked or see a panicked look on people's faces when we're doing our Zoom classes that they forgot to buy graham cracker crumbs. So you could essentially make your own. If you have a food processor, super easy. If you don't have a food processor, it's a little more difficult because I'm gonna show you here. Sometimes I go a little tiny bit over, but it's a really fine round graham cracker. I mean, we're, already, we're almost getting into like flour department. So graham cracker crumbs, now by the way is the time, I don't want to time stamp this too much, but we're right into December, so now is definitely the time to be picking up your graham cracker crumbs. Oliver, can you please go on your mat? Thank you, lovey. All right, so I've got my graham cracker crumbs into our bowl. Next up, we want to add sugar. So some debates on adding sugar or not. I go ahead and yes, always add sugar. I feel like this is a really great opportunity to get a little sweetness and get a little spice. Sometimes I will even put a little touch of vanilla right into the crust, really yummy. But we're gonna do three tablespoons of just granulated white sugar. Two, three. I put everything behind me after I use it. If you know me, you know I do that. If you're wondering, that's why. Cinnamon, little bit of cinnamon in the crust. We're going to do a quarter teaspoon. And now if I were making this at home, I don't think I would really be measuring, but I've had to become quite good at doing this for these types of videos because we wanna make sure that we're, you know, staying with the formula and baking as you may know is a bit of a formula this is an eggnog spice but for all intents and purposes it basically has nutmeg in it that's what we're looking for so before we add our melted butter i'm just going to use a whisk and i really want to just get all of that sugar and spice and everything nice just really well incorporated. And then <clears throat> when I mix my crust, I actually use a spatula. I find it gets very lumpy and bumpy when it's all in the graham cracker. So I don't use a whisk. All right, we need a half a cup of butter. We can use salted or unsalted. Stand by, let me grab my half a cup. I know you might say, but she's got it in a measuring cup already. I actually measured out a little bit of extra butter because we will need some for the custard. But there's my half a cup and the rest is going to live behind just for a bit. And then we are going to very carefully, you always need to be a little bit careful when you're mixing a liquid into something dry. If you get too aggressive, it may want to slosh out. Okay, I just need to stop for one second. I 
could actually just eat this. Legit. I could eat that by itself. So what are we looking for in a graham cracker crust? This is going to be a baked one. Now the custard we're cooking on the stove for the eggnog pie, but the crust is going to get 10 minutes at 350. We say 10 minutes because it really just needs enough time to set up. It's not going to cook it so that it's all dried out, but it definitely needs to set. So I have this super fun kind of old school looking glass pie plate. You can use glass, you can use ceramic, you can use metal, you can use disposable, please just use what you have. But we definitely want this to be a deeper dish pie plate. And I do have a stack, I don't know if you're like me, but I do have a few other pie plates on hand. And some of them are really quite shallow and I wanna make sure that we've got enough room for filling. So this is where clean hands come into play. Ooh, it's nice and warm. We're just gonna press the crust down, across and up the sides. And this is where you will see, wow, glad we used a bit of a, a deeper pie plate or pie tin. So give it a press. You may also like to use, just a little butter left in that, no problem. You can also use the back of a measuring cup. Kind of makes a really nice way to make a few little walls, make a little floor here. We're not going all the way through to the bottom. So it's a nice way to kind of pat this down so that it has a nice bake, but at the same time, doesn't go through to the bottom. We do still want a crust fit for cutting if you so choose. Um, an eight by eight baking dish will also work in this recipe. You may have seen me mention that. And that just means that if you're not a pie plate family, but you've got like a square baking dish, you can certainly make this more in square form, but know that you might be doing a little more scooping to serve it. When you have a pie plate, it actually kind of becomes a pie that you can cut if you get my drift. So I just sort of use the finger, the fingers, my fingers, and just gently press. The more you press, the more it will sort of break apart. So just be nice and gentle. But that butter is going to allow the sugars to melt. So once it hits the oven, it will have a chance to melt the sugar and the sugar, even though we love sugar because it adds sweetness, the sugar works for structure. So it's gonna kind of help pull this pie crust together. Because it's glass, I'm able to kind of do a little peek. Looks fabulous on the underside. I dare not do that to show you. But it looks great and my oven is not quite at 350. So I'm gonna set this here behind me and we are going to take one quick break. I'm just gonna put some of my dirty dishes into the sink. When we come back, we are going to work on the eggnog custard and the very first step, which is the most important, is we have to separate the star of the show, our eggs. We have to separate four eggs. So I'll meet you back here in just a sec. And we're back. All right, we are separating four eggs, which is what this recipe needs, four large eggs. And traditionally, if you see a recipe that says eggs and nothing else, you can pretty well assume that it means a large egg. So I'm just using white eggs. You can use white, you can use brown, no difference. We want to get just the egg yolks and we're gonna save the, scram the whites for a scramble. So. We're gonna crack them. You do, you do you. You do whatever way works for you. I use my sink as a good little receptacle. Oliver. Oliver's wearing a cone. Okay, so there's one. Again, there are gadgets that exist to separate eggs. I think these are the best gadget ever. So how do I do it? If you can see, nice little crack on a flat surface. As soon as I crack it open, I kind of turn it into my hand so it's a little cup. And then I use my other hand as the receptacle and I kind of pass it back and forth. 
and when I know I just have yolks, we're good to go. The whites can all fall here. I won't throw those out for sure. I'm gonna put them down in the sink, but I will use those either in a scramble or maybe you wanna do a really fun meringue or you just wanna make like a frittata or something like that. So you've got four egg whites. They can hang here. My yolks are good to go. My eggshells I will deal with momentarily. And at Cook With Meg, we always clean as we go. So it is really important, especially if you're in the kitchen with kids, teaching everyone to get kind of clean as you go is a really good step, especially because we just cracked eggs and we're dealing with a raw product that's on the counter. So whatever you need to do to give it a, a wipe, we call it a little bit of a kitchen reset, never hesitate to take a sec or two and get everything kind of um, clean. That's the word I'm looking for. So there are my four egg yolks. All right, now we are getting ready to make our custard. But you know what? I'm gonna put my pie crust into the oven. My oven is already very, very close to 350. So in it goes, and we're going to put it in for about 10 minutes. So let's put it in and set the timer. And know that that's it for cooking for baking. This isn't a pie that needs to go back into the oven. The rest we are going to be making stove top. So that is it for using your oven. 10 minutes, preheated 350 degree oven. There it is, it's telling me it's 350. And what's gonna happen is it is going to just set up. We'll turn the oven off, we'll take it out and then it will cool completely while we make our custard. I will give you a full disclaimer, should have at the beginning, that this pie needs to go into the fridge and really chill. So if you are thinking to do this for an evening dinner or a big holiday dinner, make it in the morning, that's probably my best bet, and let it kind of chill in the fridge all day. So we are now moving on to let's make the eggnog custard. We have separated our eggs, and now what we need to do is we need to heat three cups of whole milk in a saucepan until it's almost boiling. So let me grab some milk. I am using whole milk today. In other recipes, I would use probably what we have on hand, which would be 2%. My son and husband love 2%, but I am going whole milk. It's the holidays and I really want this to be a really epically delish pie and custard. So I'm going whole milk, which is 3.25% milk fat. If you don't have whole milk and your kitchen fridge has 2%, great. 1%, I might say no, only because you do want that milk fat to make this really luscious. So let's pop this back in the fridge. We are going to turn our burner on. I have an induction burner which allows me to cook and still talk to you and it does heat up really quickly. So just bear with me as far as your oven. If your stove or your burner is taking longer than mine, you're not doing anything wrong, this is just faster. So feel free to pause me, pause the video whenever you need a little bit of catch up time. All right, I'm gonna make a little bit of room my egg yolks are hanging out. My three cups of milk are in my saucepan. And we do want to get stirring it. So I'm going to grab one more spatula, which I love very much. I really love a spatula. I think a whisk is also a great tool and time and place. But for me, I just feel like I like the contact of a spatula. And the reason we basically say keep the spatula moving when you're heating milk, you don't want your milk to scald and stick to the bottom of your pan. And then you've got little caramelized, maybe even burned bits of milk, which will change not only the color of the custard, but the texture. So, all right. I made a quick change and I'm using my everyday pan mainly because it's just easier for you to see into. So let's move a couple of these things out of the way. You can kind of see what's happening. 
All I am doing on my left, my left, your right maybe, <laughs> is heating up the milk. So it's just three cups of milk. What I am going to add to my milk, however, is secret ingredient number one, which is imitation rum extract. So I'm using extract, obviously that means everyone can enjoy it. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of vanilla. All your measurements are there. It's like a teaspoon of each. And I like to add it to the milk because it's a chance for the flavors to start to make their way into the milky liquid, which is the base of the custard. While that's happening, we've got about five minutes left on our graham cracker crust. It's already starting to smell really great. And that milk smells really good too. It's milk, vanilla extract, and rum extract. All right, into my pan, my uh, pot, you can use a pan or a pot, we're gonna get our dry ingredients put together. So for the dry ingredients, what we want to add first is our do 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 third of a cup of all-purpose flour so when i use flour i actually use a knife and we want to scoop it up flour tends to get a lot of air pockets so i just want to level it off kind of tap it down break away any of those air pockets and then level it so we know we've got a good even measurement so just into a saucepan, in my case, I'm using a bigger pot just so you can see. So we are adding a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. Then we want to add sugar, a little nutmeg, a little cinnamon, and a little salt. So we're moving to the bigger jug of sugar because for this, we need two thirds of a cup. Granulated, white, sugar, in it goes. It's a whole pie before you're like, it's a whole pie. Back to our milk. We're doing double duty here. We are not boiling the milk, but we definitely want to heat it up until it's nice and warm. I would say bordering on hot, but not a boil. I always, with a clean finger, kind of step in to see how close we are. We're close. It's pretty hot, but it's not quite there yet. So dry ingredients are a third of a cup of all-purpose flour, two thirds cup granulated white sugar, we do need a pinch of salt, and I may be adding more in a bit, just a little pinch. It helps bring out the flavors. And then back to our spices, we are going to go ahead and add in a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and nutmeg. very key flavors when it comes to eggnog. Now, I can use my whisk, although we wanna be careful because this is a nonstick pan. We're just sort of blending it together. We just want the dry to kind of hang out. If you're wondering why is she mixing just dry ingredients? This is where the hot milk is gonna come into play. So get it mixed, then we wait. Now it's a waiting game, we're waiting on our crust, we're waiting on our milk. If you are stirring your milk and you happen to kind of feel that there's a, almost like a little seal across the bottom, that's just telling you that you need to be stirring it a little more. So almost boiling, we're gonna take it off the heat here there we go. I wear a black shirt. I do love color more than anything, but I wear a black shirt so that you can see things. I'm a good like backdrop. If I'm holding up ingredients, you can see them. And I just saw some steam puff up. So we are definitely at the point where our milk is a beautiful heat temperature. I think we're almost ready to take it off the heat. There we go. So it's not boiling, but it is definitely steamy. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. And what I'm going to do is we are going to just make a little room for ourselves. The 
first thing that we need to do is we need to start incorporating some of the hot milk into our dry ingredients, whisking or mixing the entire time. And we're gonna do it one cup at a time. I'm just giving, keeping my eye on the oven, but that's okay. So we're gonna go one cup at a time. There's one. It's really great when you can use hot, hot, hot milk, especially if it's going into sugar and flour and spice. And by doing it one cup at a time, you're really allowing everything to hydrate. So it's not, oh, that's so much hot liquid on a whole bunch of dry ingredients and then everything's just a real clumpy, clumpy, lumpy mess. So we're just gonna do one cup at a time. And I use a spatula so I can do this. You can whisk or spatula. I like to kind of really get in there and give everything a chance to kind of smush and break down. This is great. Okay, there's my oven telling me that my crust is ready to come out. So I'm gonna take a quick pause. I'm gonna take it out of the oven and I'm just gonna set it on top of the oven and then we'll come back and add more milk. There it is. Oh, that might be the best holiday smell ever. It is just starting to get a little bit of color. I mean, it was already a beautiful color, but you can see kind of around the edges, it's starting to get a little more golden. Looks great, smells great, needs to cool. And that's it for that portion of the cooking. All right, so now let's get back to this hot milk, adding the hot milk into our flour, sugar, Nutmeg, cinnamon, it's kind of making a little mess on my burner. No biggie, we can clean it up. Yes, so we have here, we've got our milk, our flour, our sugar, our pinch of salt, and we've got some vanilla, some nutmeg. We're gonna be adding a little bit more flavoring as this goes on, but again, my tip, add a little to start right to the milk because it's going to taste amazing. Okay, that's looking good. It's also a really good chance for you to kind of like push your spatula or your whisk through and make sure that there are no lumps and so far so good. There we go. At this point, it just looks like milk, but it smells amazing knowing that we've got the sugar in it, knowing we have the flour in it. That flour is gonna help everything start to come together and thicken. What I do wanna do, and I can because it is an induction burner, is just wipe this off. Beautiful. Give that another couple of mixes here. Now, what we wanna do is we want to start something called tempering. So tempering is where we take something cold, i.e. the eggs, and we add them to something hot, i.e. this mixture I'm pointing to. But if we were to add the yolks directly into this, what is your best guess? What do you think is going to happen? Are you all yelling scramble? Yeah, you could get some scrambling happening. So. What we wanna do is, again, with a clean hand, we wanna to touch this. It's actually not so, so, so hot, but we're gonna do something called tempering. And tempering is a really, really easy way to make sure that you don't have scrambling happening. So there are my yolks. I'm gonna give them a little whisk. We need to break those up. We haven't touched them yet. Hello, beautiful yolks where the fat is, a lot of the vitamins and minerals, so good. This is the fat that's gonna help pull that custard together. It's gonna help everything become super, super luscious. 
All right, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take, I'm a righty and I always like to kind of switch my grip here. We're gonna take a little measuring cup. I can move this for now. And we are going to take a bit of the warm mixture. So we go warm to cold. You always kind of make your way from, from hotter to cooler. Oliver, stay there bud. And we're going to just put them side by side. And this is where teamwork comes into play. So if you've got cooking in a team, work in a team, we're gonna dribble in a little bit of the warm, 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 warm mixture to the egg yolks. We're not stopping with the whisking, but this is sort of one of those rub your tummy, pat your head things. You kind of have to concentrate. So a little bit of dribble. And the reason we're doing this again is we have semi room temperature, but probably still a little chilly yolks and a pan of this gorgeous, sweet scented holiday milk. If we were to put it all in at once, you'd probably get a little bit of scrambling. So I like to do it this way. And what it does is it kind of evens out the temperature, cold, hot, hot, cold. It kind of brings it like this. So you can keep going. Once you get a few in, you are pretty much good to go. Concentrating, I'm like, my face is quite. But I'm like, I don't want to mess up. I should smile more. Okay, so there we go. Made a little dribble, a little cleanup. Now, if we did the test, we are good. We are lukewarm and we are semi warm, but I'm okay with that. So now I can kind of do the opposite. So the opposite is literally the opposite. We are going to now have this part moving steadily. Oliver, on your mat, bud. And we're gonna bring the egg mixture in this way. So we know we tempered it to a point where we're probably nice and safe. And I am actually going to use this everyday pan to finish the custard. I'm not going to put it back into a saucepan. You might have been working with two saucepans and that's cool. We're gonna turn the heat back on to a medium and we're just going to cook the custard. So what have we done? We have literally taken our pot, cut. Oliver, I need you over here, okay? I need you on your mat, on your mat. You're making this very difficult. On your mat, Baba. I love you. Stay. All right, so we have tempered in those beautiful egg yolks. And that just meant that we took our very warm milk and we added a little bit of milk at a time to the egg yolks to increase the temperature of the egg so that when it goes back into the pot, it's not gonna scramble. And now that it's all back in, really at this point, we are just going to cook it until it starts to come together. So if we're looking here on directions page two, we've tempered in our eggs, we've added the eggs back in, we're continuing to mix. It's back on medium for heat and it's going to take a couple of minutes of cooking. So just take your time. This is where I really do enjoy this spatula because I'm just sort of making my way around the pan. Now, let's be real, let's troubleshoot. If you do happen to see a little bit of maybe egg yolk that solidified a touch, you are absolutely able to pull that out. Sometimes people pass their custard through a mesh, wire mesh sieve. This one's looking pretty good. I can see little bits of nutmeg. I can see little bits of cinnamon. Let's wait for it to start to thicken up before we make any decisions. All that you would need to do would be to take a spoon and just sort of dip in and pull out a little piece of egg yolk if it happened to cook. 
together. All right, so I'm going to be here. Medium is the heat. This obviously has to come up to almost a boil. Right now, it is just a big, beautiful pot of what looks like milk, but remember it's got the flour, the sugar, those four egg yolks. It will start to thicken, but it'll take at least five to eight minutes. So just keep stirring it. You will notice the thickening is going to happen. Just give it time. When it starts to thicken, think in your mind, this needs to go into a pie crust. So it needs to look like thick, luscious, sticky pudding. So we wanna get it to that point. We still have to add a couple of ingredients off the heat, but I'll meet you back here when you have a pan of thick, sticky pudding. Meet you back here in just a few. Okay, we are back. And I have been tending to this, but I have switched to a whisk because when I ran my spatula through, I definitely was starting to see clumps and clumps are a good thing. But what I wanna do now is just use the whisk to really start to break those up. So it is thickening, it's starting to become more of a pudding consistency. And remember, <coughs> excuse me, this will firm up big time once it's off the heat and even more so when it's in the crust and in the fridge. Now it's starting to look really good. I can feel it, I can see it. In fact, check it out. If I put my spatula all the way through, can you see that? It's literally clinging to the bottom. So we are not very far away. You're cooking the eggs, you're cooking the flour. It's almost like making a gravy. So everything does need time. And you will visibly see the change. So right now, we've gone from a milky liquid to definitely thicker. There we go. See, we almost, are, we're almost to pudding state, friends. It smells amazing. It's a little easier to see because I'm using such a wide pan. If you were using a saucepan, know that you would probably need to really whip it to see. There we go. See how thick that is? That's ultimately, and there it comes to a boil. I would say now that we're at a boil, I'm gonna turn off the heat. It smells amazing. It smells like eggnog. It smells like hot eggnog. I'm gonna pull this right off the heat. Give me one sec. Let's move this out of the way. That, whoops, looks a uh, Amazing. I mean, it literally, I think probably to the second, this took five minutes. But see, the beautiful thing about pre-mixing all of that flour and sugar and some of the spices into the hot milk was we got rid of any chance of big lumps and bumps. But I'm going back in with my whisk. Oh yeah, this is amazing. And we're gonna just carefully, without damaging our pan, whisk out any of the real big lumps and bumps. Now, we still have to add a couple of ingredients. The first one is butter. So if you are looking at your recipe, we need four tablespoons of butter. So I've got mine in little lumps. This is where it gets amazingly decadent. We're gonna put those down in. We're gonna give that a chance to melt. And we're going to get a spoon because we wanna taste it as the cook, we get to taste. We're gonna let that butter melt in, which is again going to give that richness, right? To this point, we didn't have any butter in the, in the custard. And the butter is not only gonna give a richness, but it's gonna help everything pull together, especially when it cools. So the smoother you can get it, the more compliments you will get when people cut through their beautiful piece of pie. Now, I wanna be very, very, very honest with you. 
This is a pie that is sort of uh, tan in color, um, which would be fairly reminiscent of a true eggnog if you made homemade. But commercial eggnog definitely has some color that has been added. So I'm going to give you the option and I'm actually gonna do it tonight. I'm gonna to show you by adding just a drop of yellow coloring, how you can change the color to make it a little more buttery in color, which in our minds maybe makes you think of traditional eggnog. So we'll meet you back here with a little bit of color. This is absolutely, I have some gel color. It's absolutely not necessary. Right now it looks kind of like a vanilla pudding, but if I put just one tiny little drop, now we're really yellow. We may have gone too yellow, <laughs> but you know what? That to me looks more like an eggnog, kind of looks like a lemon cream or lemon pudding or a, an eggnog pie, especially if you are making this for the holidays and you want to pipe whipped cream on top. This probably looks a little more traditional, maybe a little less than I went, but it looks really good. All right, so the butter is in. I think we need to taste it. Remember that we already added the rum extract and the vanilla, but I wanna see here, what does it need? This is our chance, last chance. What? What is happening that is so good? I'm going a little more rum extract. And I'm going a little more nutmeg and I'm going another little pinch of salt. This is where you can have fun. Now don't get carried away. I sometimes do. But I mean, I'm going eggnog. That's actually really pretty. I Now that I'm looking at it, the color, it's really pretty. Commercial eggnog is definitely yellow. Homemade eggnog, not as yellow, but a little bit of coloring is fine. Okay, this looks amazing. You can see, you can see the little bits, you can see the little bits of the, the nutmeg and the cinnamon. Oh, really get in there and give this a really good mix. Now, I will be very honest with you. You really do kind of need to let this almost get to room temperature before it goes into the crust. But I'm always pretty impatient. So I think what I will do for today is to get it into the pie crust just so you can see it. But then we absolutely have to go into the fridge for a few hours at minimum. Here's my last test. Mm. Did I tell you that you can also just eat that like a pudding? That is unbelievable. Wow. Okay, it's so good. It's 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 definitely scented, like it's holiday, it's nutmeg, it's sweet, it's creamy. That's perfect. Oh, that's good. That's so good. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna wipe down my counter. Made a little bit of a mess. We definitely have some cleanup today. Give this a wipe. We're gonna move this over because it's very hot still. In an ideal world, you'd go watch a part of a Christmas movie and then you'd come back. But probably want to use oven mitts, but I do pick stuff up quite frequently, so my hands are a little immune to the heat. So this is perfect but now what I'm gonna do is very carefully pour this in hello now this is not going to go into the fridge until this is room temperature make me a promise don't put it in the fridge yet because 
it is, it's way too hot and it doesn't damage your fridge. Oliver, just give me one sec. Oh, this looks amazing. It won't damage your fridge, but just let it come to room temperature. Let's put this back here. And let's take this little piece of crust that made its way out. Oh my God. Okay, I'm very proud of this. So, what do we have? We have an eggnog pie. Friends, we made eggnog pie. I'll show you. Sometimes I tilt it if it's a little off kilter. And there it is. It looks amazing. It needs to completely chill. So for two, three, four hours, really chill it. It's like a pudding, essentially a custard pie, a pudding. So it needs to go into the fridge. And then I like to serve it with piped whipped cream. And if you have just whipped cream like spray, spray can, you could just do little rosettes. Or if you wanted to make whipped cream, put it into a piping bag, really whip it so it's super stable and then pipe little rosettes or just put a dollop on everyone's piece. I hope you enjoyed this. It smells amazing. Let me smell it. Oh my gosh, it smells like the holidays. Hope you enjoy making your eggnog pie. I am Meg Tucker. For more with me, you can find me at cookwithmeg.com. I teach classes for all ages and they are all virtual. So you cook directly from your kitchen into mine. And I also do a lot of work uh, and partner in recipe development and classes with the Egg Farmers of Alberta. Namely, one class per month is totally free at cookwithmeg.com where we are making these fun recipes and this is one of them. So hope you enjoyed it. Please find me on cookwithmeg.com, on Instagram at cookwithmegtoday. And at the end of every class, we say one thing. We always say we are awesome because I want you to remember that at the end of every day, no matter how your pie looks. Did you have fun? Check. Did you learn a few new things? Check. And are you sharing this with the people that you love? I would hope yes. I would call that a success and for that we need to celebrate. So on three, we are awesome. Thanks everyone and we'll see you soon.